So the battle of the action cameras continue. We have the GoPro Hero 11, which was released last year. I guess this one right here, the all new DJI Action 4. Now we'll be breaking this video down into three different categories. First one will be image, image quality. So we will be putting these side by side so you guys can see how much of a difference there is between these two cameras. Second category will be user experience and that's probably for me my favorite category but I will keep it second because I know a lot of people worry or think about more image first and then user experience second. So I will be talking about user experience second and then last will be durability. Now to start things off, let's jump right into image quality between these two cameras right here. When it comes to sensor size, we do have a one over 1.9 inch CMOS sensor on the GoPro Hero 11. And here on the Action 4, we have a little bit larger one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. And if that number sounds familiar, very much similar sensor size that we've had on something like the Mini 3 Pro, as well as now the new Air 3. Those have dual one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensors. When it comes down to color profiles, we actually do have 10 bit color on both of these cameras. They actually brought over 10 bit over to the Action 3 a little bit later with a firmware update. It is gonna be launching with the 10 bit color, but not just that, it's also gonna have 10 bit D log M. With that log option here on the Action 4, it does give you a little bit more flexibility in post processing. The GoPro Hero 11 does have something similar. It's more of just a flat profile with that 10 bit color. However, that 10 bit only works on the 16 by nine and eight by seven aspect ratio. It does not work in the four by three aspect ratio. We're here with the Action 4, that 10 bit D log actually works on all resolutions. And speaking of video resolution, that edge does go to the GoPro 5.3K, 60 frames a second, as well as 4K 120. Here on the Action 4, we have 4K 60 frames a second, as well as 4K 120 for slow-mo. When it comes down to field of view of these cameras, this is very important, especially if you're doing things like action sports and you want that super wide field of view. We have 155 degree field of view, which is the ultra wide setting on the Action 4. And here on the GoPro Hero 11, we have 148 degree field of view with hyper view, which is their two widest settings. So we do have a little bit edge here on the Action 4. It does give you that wider perspective. The one thing that's good is that both cameras do have a few different setting options here. So if you wanted to have not a super wide view, but a little bit more narrow, you have a linear view here on the GoPro. We're here on the Action 4. We also have something that's called D-Warp. Now, while that super wide field of view is good on both cameras, the one thing I did notice with the GoPro is that there is definitely a lot more image distortion in that wide view. And to give you a little bit more context on that, when you have a really wide view, a lot of times the lens will distort the image because it's kind of giving you that almost like a fisheye style type of look. So you'll normally get a lot of distortion on the edges. The one thing I do like about DJI and the Action 4 is that they're able to correct those edges a lot better than the GoPro Hero 11. Now the problem with that distortion is that now every time I look at GoPro footage, it's kind of hard to unsee because the image distortion is actually pretty bad towards the edges. Next feature we'll talk about is video aspect ratio and GoPro does have an additional aspect ratio here which is eight by seven, almost a full square size video. Now when they did come out with that format last year on this camera, it definitely was one of the selling points because it was trying to cater to both types of shooters. People that were shooting in horizontal format as well as a lot of social media now is shooting in vertical format. So what GoPro did is that they just now offer an eight by seven, which allows you to have a little bit bigger of an image size. And ideally what you wanna do later in post-processing is now be able to crop into that center if you did want something exported out in vertical format. Here on the DJI Action 4 side, standard widescreen, and if you wanted to shoot in vertical, all you do is pop this off and then clamp it here, and now you're able to shoot in that vertical format. Now, of course, when we're talking about action cameras, stabilization is a big topic, and stabilization on both these cameras, extremely good. I don't think there's a, a clear winner on either one of these. Putting these through all these standard tests, uh, I can't really see much of a difference when it comes down to image stabilization from these two cameras. Now here on the GoPro, they have what they call hyper smooth stabilization and DJI calls their stabilization rock steady. What's really cool is that both cameras have a setting on here which allows you to keep your horizon steady even if you're spinning the camera all the way around in 360. Here on the GoPro, it's what they call linear plus horizon lock and you are able to shoot in 4K 
with the GoPro Hero 11. And here on the Action 4, we have what they call Horizon Steady. However, here on the Action, you are able to get that Horizon Steady when you drop your resolution down to 2.7K, up to 60 frames a second. But both cameras can do this. They can spin all the way around and your horizon will just look nice and leveled all the time. Now those are just some of the main image quality specs of these two cameras, but more importantly, let's put this footage side by side so you guys can determine if there's really a clear winner one way or the other. One thing that a lot of people were complaining about was minimum focus distance issues with the action. So how have we updated it here on the new Action 4? Right now I'm about super close to you guys. I'm about maybe about six to seven inches away from the camera, but I am in that wide view. So of course I'm able to get that close, but how's the minimum focus distance here? That is scary to look at, but super close. And we back up a little bit, probably about 10 inches now. And then all the way back. Another really nice feature that DJI added on the Action 4 is now you are able to adjust sharpness as well as a new one, which is noise reduction. All you have to do is go onto the right menu, click on that, hit on Pro at the very top, and then scroll up. And now you can go to Manage Adjustments. Here on the left, you have sharpness, you have medium, high, and low. And then on the right side, you have noise reduction, high, medium, and low as well. The ability to change the sharpness is actually something that GoPro had on their cameras. GoPro doesn't have the noise reduction, which is a new one on the Action 4, but it is a nice feature that DJI did add now to the Action 4. Next, let's jump into my favorite category, which is user experience. Now, the first thing we'll talk about is the touch screens on these two action cameras. And I say touch screens because here on the Action 4, we actually have a touch screen on the rear as well as a full color touch screen on the front of the camera. Here on the GoPro, we have a full color touch screen on the rear, but we still do not have a front color touch screen on the GoPro Hero 11. It's pretty important for those that like myself that use this camera for a lot of vlogging situations. So if I wanna have this thing on my stick just like this, and I wanna change my settings, I'm able to not only see my setting here, but if I wanted to change something and go from Horizon Steady, and I wanna change that over to Rock Steady, change my resolution, I'm able to do all of those actions while still looking at the camera. And from going from vlogging with a selfie stick just like this, 
The one thing that the action camera does have is this magnetic system at the very bottom. This makes transitioning from something like this, a little handheld tripod, if I wanted to take my camera off, throw it onto something like this, a chesty mount. So if I wanna go biking, I can just take it right off of this, put it right onto my chest. Or if I wanted to switch this, I can just take this off here, drop it onto my helmet, put it onto my backpack. This magnetic system here, especially on the new Action 4, is extremely strong and reliable. When it comes to the GoPro and the versatility of that, we still have the two-prong system here at the very bottom of the Hero 11, but when you do want to switch or if you do plan on changing your setting or changing your location of your camera, you're going to need to take it off of this thing with the screw and then have to re-screw it back onto that next mount. Next feature we'll talk about is the quick switch option on the Action 4, probably one of my favorite features on it. So if you're the type like me where you're maybe shooting at different resolutions, different frame rates all the time. So for instance, if I'm just shooting something standard, I will normally just shoot in 4K, 4K 30, 4K 60. And then I will ideally like to switch over into something like 4K 120. If I know I want some of that footage, I'm gonna slow it down later on in post. If I have a bunch of different settings that I normally will use, I can actually set up custom profiles here on the Action 4 and easily toggle through them with that quick switch button here on the side. Having that button there to toggle through five custom settings is extremely useful if you do plan or do change your settings a lot. Here on the GoPro Hero 11, you are able to change your settings and they don't necessarily have a dedicated button here on the side for you to access them. What you can do is actually click and then hit the top button, the record button, and then it'll actually bring up some of these predetermined settings that you might have made. No touchscreen front, so you also not only have to switch it from the side, you don't have the option to touch it here on the front. So you are able to access it. It just, again, takes a little bit, one or two extra steps to do what's something as simple with one press of a button here on the Action 4. Next feature we're talking about is the speed to turn on the action cameras. And you might not think it's a big deal, but having the ability to hit record and have the screen and the camera start recording right away, especially when you're doing action sports, is extremely important. When it comes to just powering it on, if I press the side button here, you can see if I press ready, one, two, three, go. You can see that the action powers up a lot quicker than the GoPro. And if they're both powered off and you hit the record button here at the very top and presses at the same time, one, two, three, press. As you can see here, the Action 4, once again, a lot quicker to start powering up and record than the GoPro Hero 11. Now, while the power up and shutdown is a lot quicker on the Action 4, the one feature I do like with the Action 4 as well is that if you did start recording just by pressing the record button here at the top and then you were to stop recording. So if I were to hit stop, press stop on both. The one thing I do like on the action is that it does give you the option to cancel that power shutdown. Here on the GoPro, it'll automatically shut down without the option to cancel it. And I know I got a lot of pushback on my Action 3 video when I brought that up. People are just saying, why don't you just power it up from the side first, and then it won't turn off anymore. And I'm like, absolutely, you're right. However, again, it's still another step to take, and those seconds do add up. This is definitely something you're gonna wanna test out for yourself, just to see how much of a difference it is. And I'll tell you, if you were to test it out and on an Action 3 and Action 4, it's definitely a nice feature to be able to quick record and then have the option to then disable or cancel the auto shutdown. Next feature we'll talk about is real-time monitoring via your mobile phone or the app that's connected to your action camera. What's nice is that if you launch the DJI MIMO app, which is connected to the Action 4, you are able to see everything that the camera sees. Now the GoPro can do that as well with their Quick app. However, the one thing that GoPro can't do is that once you hit record, hit record there, it's now recording, I can still preview what the action camera sees while it's recording. While here on the GoPro, yes, I can see what the GoPro sees right there on my screen. However, once I hit record, the screen goes black. I do not have a preview anymore. It's still recording. I just can't see what I'm seeing here on my mobile device. Good morning, everybody. Just doing a little tracking, a little focus track, active track test. I've got my DJI remote control, the RC2 right here. It's actually kind of gaff taped to my, to my mount and my bike. 
And I got the Air 3 right here, hovering. Gonna be taking it through uh, this trail. And the trail does have a bunch of trees on the sides. Uh, and then it kind of opens up. And the one thing I wanna do is test out the uh, direction. So you're able to change which direction you want the drone to follow you in. Whether you want it to be from the left side, from the back, or follow you from the front. So I do want to test those out. Now while the audio out of camera is really good, if you wanted to up your audio, your external audio, you are able to plug in things like this, external microphones to your action cameras. The one downside on the GoPro side is that you have to purchase an additional mod. It's basically a housing that goes around your GoPro and then you're able to then plug in something like this, a little 3.5 external audio into that mod. So that's the one thing that you have to do with the GoPro here with the DJI Action 4. You're able to take something like this, a little Rode mic, a little micro, plug in the 3.5. All you have to do is purchase a small adapter, which is a 3.5 to a USB-C adapter. And you can purchase one, a pretty inexpensive one on, off of Amazon. And then you're able to now use something like this, external microphones, with an adapter, which is a just a little small cord adapter, versus here on the GoPro, you have to purchase an actual uh, GoPro mod that goes around it, which can be a little bit pricey if you add on a bunch of other accessories to it. What's really good about the Action 4 is that you can hook up something like this, a wireless transmitter. All you do is take off the adapter, take off the door off the side of the action camera, and then all you have to do is just plug this in, and there you go, plugs, plug and play. Now you can have wireless audio transmitted from your transmitter here to your receiver that's plugged into your action camera. Now while using external shotgun mic works well too, the one thing I really like, probably my favorite thing to use is this right here, the DJI mic. Basically it is a full wireless transmission system and all you do is plug and play. You have the transmitter right here which is on a little magnet on my shirt. Receiver is hooked up via USB-C onto the Action 4 and it is ready to go. It comes with the adapters as far as the DJI mic goes, has the adapters, plugs right in. You don't need any special pod, any special mod, anything like that. So it makes having wireless audio just like this really simple. Next, we'll talk about the UI or user interface from these two cameras right here. And I really like the interface of the Action 4. It just has a much cleaner look and the screen's much bigger on the Action. And in my opinion, I just feel like it's much clearer the settings that you're in. The one thing I do like about the GoPro is that you are able to change your field of view directly from the main screen. I do wish DJI adds that to their uh, interface here because if you wanna go from something like super wide, if I wanna go to hyper view, and I wanna switch that to shoot now something like linear or go into linear plus horizon lock, I'm able to quickly do that just from the main screen. That's something you can't do here on the Action 4 and I wish they would bring that option here. In order for you to change your field of view, you have to go into the right menu, then you have to click on FOV or field of view, then you have to toggle or swipe through, standard, wide or ultra wide, and then hit confirm. Again, user experience, how much time it takes you to do something. And for our final category, we'll talk about the durability and reliability of these two action cameras. Now, speaking of reliability, the one thing I think GoPro just cannot get out of their system is the fact that the GoPro 11, even though it's the latest and greatest and has a new battery from freezing and just doing very GoPro things. There's been a bunch of times when I'm out there and I'm just shooting normally, I will power it down and next thing you know, it just sits there saying, shutting down or powering down and it never powers down. It just kind of goes into a freeze mode or loop of saying it's powering down. And then you have to do the standard GoPro thing that everyone knows and loves is that you basically take the battery out to do a force shutdown. The great thing about both of these cameras too, uh, is that you are able to remove this cover in case you were to use it for some extreme sports you were to crack that front protective glass there, you are able to replace it on both of them. You just unscrew it here on the action, and on the GoPro, you actually just pull it and swivel it off, but you are able to replace them. Now being action cameras, they are both waterproof. Here on the GoPro, we have waterproof depths up to 10 meters, and on the Action 4, they've increased it now from the Action 3 to the Action 4, we have 18 meter depth on the DJI Action 4. When it comes down to battery life, even though we have a new Enduro battery that GoPro came out with last year, which is supposed to be really, really good in cold and hot temperatures, the DJI battery 
outlasts the GoPro every single time. When I was out there testing and shooting with both these cameras, every single time the GoPro would pretty much die before the action camera. The action will normally still have about 20 to 30% left when the GoPro battery dies out. I also did some in-studio tests, just having these side-by-side -side run until they will pretty much either die or you know, until the memory card goes out. The GoPro, the one thing too is that when it reaches or gets to the point where it's gonna say overheating, which it did multiple times, it will go into an overheat warning and then automatically shut off. And I wasn't sure you know, if there's another setting on there to prevent that, but it, there is no setting. So once you get to an overheating uh, warning, it'll automatically shut off. The one thing with the Action 4 is that I didn't get that overheat warning until probably well over, I believe it was like 90 minutes or 100 minutes into shooting. And I would get the warning, but the camera will still record. It just won't let you keep the screen on. It'll just flash up, say that it'll uh, the, that there's a warning, and then it'll the screen will turn off. But you're still recording. So when it comes down to the overheat portion of it, definitely the action did a lot better. Now, as far as cold temperature goes, I tossed these both into my freezer just to do a little simple freezer test. And the action, once again, stayed on a lot longer, recorded for a lot longer. In fact, when I was shooting with both the cameras, the GoPro died midway through and I looked at the battery percentage of it, it is at 1%. Looked at the battery percentage of the action. I still had a like about 45 to 46% left on the action when the GoPro died out. And then I let this thing keep recording and it went till about 100 minutes or so. And I still had about 15% left on it before I actually just took it out because I had to leave the house. The one thing that's nice about the Action 4 is that it also has a quick fast charge so when i was out there shooting with both the cameras and i had to actually recharge it after i did the freeze test the action 4 charged up super fast compared to the gopro now both these cameras do have a voice control or voice command so if i wanted to start i just say start recording there you go the action worked hold on start recording gopro start recording okay there you go, I guess you have to say GoPro. Now one new feature that DJI did add on the new Action 4 is the ability to have GPS and telemetry data on your footage. This is something that GoPro has had actually for a little while now. A lot of people like having the option to put some of the telemetry data on screen, how fast you're going, what elevation you're at, uh, how the distance you've been traveling. You're now able to do that with the DJI Action 4 with this right here, which is the new remote control. And if you have your camera mounted, say outside of your car, on your helmet, or in another position that you can't really necessarily get to it, or you want to make sure that you're recording, you can actually see it here on the remote control. You'll see and be able to change your quick switch options so you can change your settings as far as which uh, quick switch you want to go to. Then if you wanted some of that data baked into your footage, all you have to do is open up that camera roll on your app, the DJI Mimo app, and you're able to select which ones you want to place on there. And staying on the Mimo app, another thing you are able to do with the Action 4 is take out the stick. So if you have a some selfie stick like this, which is kind of interesting because this is something that Insta360 would be really known for and that's that taking out the stick or making it an invisible stick. There's actually an option in there which is the last option that says invisible stick. And what it does is software will automatically try to remove this stick from your footage. Now this was a feature that they actually had on the Action 3 and they were marketing it for someone that was out there like in the snow or snowboarding. Now when it comes to price, both of these cameras are coming in at $399 USD. And the one thing that's interesting, if you guys have seen some of my previous videos, what GoPro did is actually they do have it now listed on their website for $399 and they have their subscription model listed separately. This was something I complained about from GoPro from before is that it was kind of deceiving on how they were showing their price. And apparently that's gotten around because now they don't do it anymore. Before they were selling this camera for a lot cheaper, but that price included the subscription model, which then auto renews every year. And I thought that was kind of deceiving on GoPro's part. Now with image quality right on par with each other, and actually I think low light, I would actually give that over to the Action 4. When you start factoring in the price, the battery life on the Action 4, you're talking about user experience, you're talking about external audio, all the abilities to to add attachments on here without having to buy mods. The Action 4 definitely is, I think, in my opinion, takes the crown as far as 
action cameras between these two. And with the Action 4, you can definitely tell that DJI made some major updates there on the new camera when it comes down to minimum focus distance. Now, of course, this is the latest and greatest from DJI with the Action 4. We will definitely have to revisit it when GoPro comes out with their, ideally, Hero 12 which may be coming out pretty soon as well. As always, I hope you guys got some value from this video. And if you did, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Ultra Sasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys next video. Take care.